But I think the thing that's always appealed to me is kind of uh, the limitless potential. You know, this, this constant pursuit of, of new and, and pushing what some may call the envelope to, 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 to explore and to experience, to satisfy natural curiosities. And that's, that's what's always energized me about entrepreneurialism is the what could be. Social entrepreneurship is really a conversation in my mind about the economics of human potential. So being from a small southern state who really isn't in a position to underutilize all of its human capital, social entrepreneurship to me appealed as an opportunity uh, to, 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 to further opportunities within the state uh, for those who may be the least among us to experience uh, the highest potential that their work ethic, that their opportunity could afford them. While you're tempted to make it an emotional, romantic uh, conversation, don't. You should really begin to make this a mechanical conversation. And that is not so much what do I want to be when I grow up, but what problems do I want to solve? Then what credentials are going to be necessary? What resources are going to be necessary? What tools do I have access to? Um, and then truly begin to game plan the process by which you'll achieve your success. You're not in a position to solve the problem you intend to solve without a sustainable business model. So while my intentions may be honorable, while the need may be great, if I've not done my homework and my due diligence and been prudent and pragmatic about the pursuit of a sustainable business plan, um, then it really doesn't matter how good my intentions are. I think it's really a conversation about a changing generation, the transition of a generation. I think it's the transition of a world view. You know, when I speak to millennials, we don't spend a lot of time talking about how they look forward to rising through the ranks over a 30-year career in a huge corporate conglomerate. They don't talk about the security of union jobs in a factory. I think they've more or less come to terms that the economy that they live in is one that's dynamic in nature and, and candidly requires a different skill set, a different tool set, if you will, than perhaps generations prior to them. The history of Arkansas, as you well know, is rich in, in strong entrepreneurial endeavor. We have organizations that identify top athletes as early as the seventh grade in our state. We have a curriculum that identifies potential engineers and NASA, NASA scientists um, as early as the sixth grade. We do not have an infrastructure set up to identify future entrepreneurs. If you acknowledge the fact that entrepreneurship on a, on a go-forward basis in many respects will be the backbone of our economy, then it seems to me that we should be identifying those potential entrepreneurs as early as possible. So I would say the unique opportunity that Arkansas has is to create a framework that identifies those future leaders, both business, political, uh, as early as possible within our educational system. The conversation that I hope we're having in 10 years about social entrepreneurship is that just like uh, the Gates or the Cases or you know, any of the names that you would recognize, uh, the Zuckerbergs, any of the names you would recognize as titans of industry, titans of technology, that our best and brightest within the next 10 years, we would be speaking about social entrepreneurship endeavors in the same vernacular that we speak of emerging technologies, uh, that we would have a secondary market for their investment, that we would have the ability to purchase in a public forum shares in social enterprise opportunities. Um, so in 10 years, I think what you'll see is this conversation about social entrepreneurship will be in the same voice that we're having about the most recent startup in Palo Alto.